Welcome back to Follow the Compass North. Today we're going to be talking about rabbit keeping. We're not going to be talking about my mad art skills. Before you purchase your rabbits, you're going to need to consider what you're going to use them for, because that will determine what breed you should get, or what mix you should get. Some common uses of rabbits include meat, wool, and pets. You'll see here that I included fur with the meats, because if you're going to be harvesting them for their meat anyway, you may as well use the fur. So a lot of those breeds are dual purpose. So as far as breeds, you might get a New Zealand white, a Californian. Uh, for fur, silver foxes and rexes are excellent. For wool, you'll have breeds like the Angoras, mostly. That's French, English, and giant Angoras. But some people also use traditionally pet breeds like Jersey Wooly or American Fuzzy Lops for wool as well. Most of the rest of your breeds are going to be pet breeds. Some smaller ones like your Netherland Dwarf or your Halden Lops, but you also have some really large ones like Flemish Giants. They're usually all going to be bred for temperament more so than any other trait you might have. Regardless of what type of rabbit you buy, the housing considerations are going to be about the same. All rabbits are relatively temperature sensitive. They prefer a temperature of around 60 to 65 degrees. Once you start getting above 70 or so, it starts to get too hot for them, and you need to take steps to mitigate the temperature. I like to freeze water bottles and put the frozen water bottles in with them to help bring down the temperature. Now when it starts getting cold, your first thought is probably going to be to put them in a shed to stay warm, but then you start running into ventilation issues. Rabbit urine is high in ammonia, and it can damage their lungs, so you need to make sure that they have fresh air at all times without being drafty. Now one thing that a lot of people don't think about is manure management. What are you going to do with everything that comes back out of that rabbit? You need to have a plan in, in place, whether it's putting it on your garden, putting it in a compost pile. You need to know in advance what you're going to do to dispose of their waste. Now, one last but very important thing that you need to consider when you're housing your rabbit is how much space they're going to need, which is going to depend on how big they are. I got this information here from the ARBA, which is the American Rabbit Breeders Association. You can see that they run, you know, less than 4.4 pounds are going to need about 1.5 square feet. All the way up to the bigger rabbits, like your Flemish Giants, that are going to be above 11.9 pounds, they're going to need more than 5.4 square feet. That's a very important thing to keep in mind when you work on how you're going to house them. I'll put a link to this information in the description below. Now, what you have to remember is that the square footage as a minimum for these, uh, for these weights, only includes floor space required. That can change depending on what equipment you're using that takes up that floor space. Now, as far as equipment, I'm including in that the type of feed that you're going to use. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to use some form of pelleted food that you're, you're going to want to control to keep them from getting too fat, but unlimited hay, which could require a hay feeder. And the pellets are going to require something like a J feeder, which is a, a J-shaped feeder that will go on the wall of your cage, or a crock, which can also be used for water. Now, if you use a crock for either of those things, it's going to take up floor space and you're going to need to allow for more than if you use something like a J-feeder or a bottle, which are going to take up considerably less room. Once you've calculated your minimum floor space for your rabbit, you need to decide what type of housing that you're going to build for them. This can include wire cages, hutches, colonies, or tractors. Wire cages can be either pre-manufactured or built by yourself. If they're pre-manufactured, the most common sizes are the 24 square, the 30 square, or the 36 square inch ones. Uh, they, they're built to 
have a wire bottom to allow your manure to go through the bottom to make it a little easier to clean up. But they have their drawbacks as well. They can cause sore hawks if the rabbit doesn't have any way of getting off of the wire, and a few other problems like that. Uh, some people build hutches which are partially a wire cage with a wooden housing around it to protect them from the elements. It has the same uh, drawbacks as the wire cage, but they also have the drawback of being made out of wood, which rabbits like to chew on. So it can, it can be difficult to keep them from chewing on the sides of your hutch. Now the colony, that's a little bit more complicated than we're going to get into here. What it basically means is you're keeping a group of rabbits together, generally for breeding purposes. So you need to, you need to uh, calculate your size depending on how many and how large of rabbits you have. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to be in something considerably larger than any of the other options. And I might do a video in later about doing colonies, but I'm afraid I don't know very much about it at this time. Uh, a rabbit tractor is another option. It's a very interesting option specifically for growing out meat rabbits. Uh, it is, in a lot of ways, either a wire or a hutch, but it's built to be able to move around a yard to allow them to eat grass without escaping. There are a lot of different ways that you can choose to house your rabbit. It's up to you and your particular style what you're going to use it for. So those are your basic things to consider when you're first getting into rabbit keeping. Your uses, your housing with your temperature, ventilation, manure management and space, as well as type of housing, and the different equipment and food that you're going to use for your rabbits. Now, if you liked our content today, feel free to subscribe, to leave a comment, a like, anything you can to help the page would be very much appreciated. Thank you and have a good day.